Hi, I'm Liv Cat, and welcome to Just For You. I'm so glad you tuned in today to hear the good news of the gospel of our Lord Jesus the Christ, the promised Messiah. It's the, the good news for your body, for your soul, and for your spirit. And we just want to uh, thank the Lord for the opportunity to come before you today. So let's begin with prayer. Father, we thank you for your goodness and mercy in our behalf, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that your grace is sufficient and that your mercies are new and fresh each morning. And we give you all the praise and all the glory and all the honor, for truly it all belongs to you. And I pray, Lord, that you would be with us all in a mighty way, Lord, as your word comes forth, let it come forth unhindered and with your, the anointing of your presence, Lord and that our hearts would be prepared to hear and receive. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, praise the Lord. Today I have uh, the message is called, It's the Relationship with Jesus and Not the Rigors of the, of the Law. It's really all about relationship and not about religion. For religion will always bring you back to the law. But you know, the law has no power to save you. Because as it, as it says, I'm going to read to you out of Ephesians, Ephesians 2, 8 to 10. It says, for by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it's a gift of God. See, we're, we're saved by his grace, by faith, because it's impossible to please God without faith. Everything that we do comes by faith. And he gives us grace. He gave us grace to receive him. For it's not of works, lest any man should boast. For truly we are his workmanship, created unto good works, which he has before ordained, that we should walk in them. Amen. Another portion in the Bible, it says that, that, the, that he knew us even before we were in our mother's womb. Praise the Lord. We are truly his workmanship. He has a plan and a purpose for every single one of our lives. So, John 1 and 17 says that, that the law came by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. And grace, grace, uh, well, most of the, t the more popular one is grace is unmerited favor. Yes, it's unmerited favor, but it, 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 um, but in that unmerited favor, we have grace to live this supernatural life in him. So, I want to begin, I want to be, begin reading here. I have two particular scriptures, and one of them is out of Philippians. It's Philippians 3, and I'm going to start with... Uh, Verse 9 and go to Philippians 4 and 1. This is Paul writing to the uh, Philippians. He'd already uh, warned them of, um, of uh, false teaching. And, uh, and, they, and he talks about uh, the circumcision and how he, uh, he actually... Uh, he, he put a little sarcasm in there, and he said to beware of evil workers, beware of the concision, which is kind of a play on words. But he was really talking about the Judaizers who, who already was, was saying that they were Jews that had, had uh, followed, made the decision to follow Christ. And, uh, but they were saying that the Gentiles had to be circumcised like them. But later on, we'll see that it's not the circumcision of the, of the uh, foreskin, but it is the circumcision of the heart 
that we all need, both male and female. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So Paul is, is uh, he's um, beginning to talk about himself and his relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And he says, and to be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. You see, there was a great exchange that took place on the cross. Um, and that exchange was, is, is was we, when we come to the cross, we come with a, the first time, we come with a filthy rags, you know, of our righteousness that is like filthy rags. And, and we lay it down at the foot of the cross and we walk away with his righteousness. So that's what he was talking about, to be found in him, not having my own righteousness, but that which is through the faith of Christ. But it's the faith of Christ in what he has done at the cross. And we're going to talk about that today because I, in order to have a relationship with the Lord, you really need to know all that he's done at the cross. And that he was the, and to know that he was the only one that could pay that price. Not a one of us could pay that, pay that price. Only he. Because he was the word that became flesh and dwelt among us, as John, 1, John uh, chapter 1 says. Yeah. And through his sinless life, he was the perfect lamb sacrifice. You know, when John saw Jesus, Oh, and he was, when John was uh, baptizing in the River Jordan and he saw Jesus coming, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. And that was sin plural because he was talking about really the sin nature. Because when, when man fell, that changed the, the nature because God had meant for Adam and Eve to live forever. But once sin entered in, they, they, they died spiritually, praise the Lord. And that is why we, well, well I might want to get ahead of myself here. <laughs> so, so we don't have our own righteousness, which was of the law. The law, like I said, the law cannot save us, that we are saved by grace and faith, and faith by grace that we receive after we, from God, it's a gift of God that we receive so that we can walk in that newness of life that we found, that, uh, that we now received for making Jesus our Lord and our Savior. He's the one ruling on the throne of your heart and your life. And he says in verse 10, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. That we want to, we want to know him. You know, he, um, after, after uh, Paul met Jesus, uh, then he spent, uh, he just, uh, he just uh, spent some time just studying with, with the Holy Spirit and, the, and, uh, and just allowing the, the Lord to, to talk to him and, and bring great revelations. And all these teachings that we have, it comes out of the relationship that he had with the Lord. He also, he already was brilliant in the Word. He knew, he knew the Word, but, uh, but but after coming to know Jesus, he had a revelation of the word. He came to know the word himself that became flesh and dwelt among us and went to the cross willingly to pay the price for you and me. And if by any means that I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, not as though I had already attained it, or neither were already perfect, 
but I follow after if that I may apprehend for that which I also am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, I forget those things that are behind, and I'm reaching forward to those things that are before me. And I press towards the mark. The mark represents the, the moral and spiritual target that we are reaching out for, for the pride of the high calling of God, Christ's likeness, in Christ Jesus. This proclaims the manner in which we walk after we have uh, come, after we have received that which is done on the cross. Praise you, Jesus. We bless your name. So let us therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded. And if, you know, I'm sorry, but I forgot to say in the beginning that this was going to be like a Bible study today. That I'm going to be reading from the Bible and founding on the Word and, and, and just speaking to you about um, having a relationship with the Lord, with the Lord Jesus Christ. Because in this day, in this, these times, you know, Jesus is coming back soon. And he's, and uh, I would say to you, are you ready? Are you ready for his imminent return? Oh, yes. We say, oh, Lord, come, come quickly. Come now. But, you know, are you ready? Are you ready? So how will you be ready? You, you are, uh, you get ready by preparing your heart. You know, I've, um, uh, in, in months past, I have spoke about the uh, the virgins, the ten, the parable of the ten virgins. Five were wise and five were foolish. Well, that they had lamps, and they ha and was symbolic of a, it's a, a lamp is a vessel. It was a vessel that held the oil, and we are vessels that hold the presence of God. Because once you uh, have given your life to Christ, you know He enters in because God is always wanted to uh, indwell his people. It, he talks about it in the Old Testament, how he wanted, how he desires to indwell his people. And at such a time as when the Messiah would come, that that would be made possible. And so that is what Jesus, uh, he uh, won for us at the cross. And not only are we forgiven for our sins and that, uh, and that uh, our sins are put away from us as far as the east is from the west. And that means that they're out of sight and then whenever, we never should see them again. And if, uh, and if, if, you, if you hear something, you know, saying, oh, what about this or what about that? And you start remembering, you know, you need to, to not uh, remember and just say, no. And if, um, and say no to the lying devil that's whispering in your ear. And say no, I am a child of the king. That's where I wear this this crown, because I'm I'm one of his daughters. <laughs> and uh, I have to say, I got, uh, as, you know, it doesn't matter how long you are with him. You keep getting revelations, and. Uh, uh, of who he is and who you are in him. And I have a, a clear idea, a clear, um, ident uh, a clear uh, awareness of my identity in Christ. And, I, and my, my whole thing is to be able to, to not just to win souls, but to, to have you to know what it is, what is this wonderful gift that God has given you through salvation? And what is sanctification all about? Because we talk about those things all the time. We're going to talk about them some more today. Praise the Lord. So, it says, 
Well, the last verse that we just read was, he, was that we press forward for the mark, for the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. So let us therefore, as many be perfect. Now this place, the word perfect uh, means mature. Sometimes the perfect means complete, because we are complete in him. There's another uh, verse. Uh, that says that we are complete in him, and we are, because that's another thing that the Lord took, because that sanctification process begins, because the Holy Spirit, in the, in the see, there's the Old Testament and the New Testament, okay? The Old and the New, and it also can be called the Old Covenant and the New Covenant. In the Old Covenant, the Holy Spirit came upon came upon the, um, the prophets and the kings and, and, and enabled them and, and uh, enabled them to do what the task that, they, that God had called them to do. But in the new covenant, he now indwells us. But when we come together with other Christians, he, he, comes, he comes upon us also. But Lord, he, he has, he's filling us from within. You know, the, the, um, the wonderful story about the woman at the well, that is what, what Jesus was telling her, that you come and draw water, and you're going to have to come back again and draw water tomorrow, too. But he said, I will give you water that will remain in you, and it will spring up within you into everlasting life. And the, that word that he, the, uh, water is also symbolic of the, uh, of the word and the spirit. And, and we, <laughs> that we get when we, when we surrender our life to him and when we begin to study and read and learn about him. He said, take my yoke upon me and learn of me because I'm meek and I'm lowly of heart. And I will, I've come to, to, to bring rest for your souls. You know, Jesus is the Sabbath rest. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we as Christians, we meet on Sunday because that was when the, when the, the Lord uh, was resurrected and uh, they found that his body was no longer in the tomb. Praise the Lord. So that became the Lord's day. So it says, let us therefore as many as be perfect be thus minded, and then if anything be in you otherwise minded, that God should reveal this unto you. you. See, this is the wonderful thing that we have with the Holy Spirit. For the Holy Spirit, Jesus, when he spoke about the Holy Spirit, he said he's going to be your teacher, and he's going to reveal the word to you. He, he's going to reveal things to you. And he will reveal to you things that you don't need anymore. You know, I don't know. Uh, I remember I, I had a vision. And, um, oh, when I was young in the Lord, and, and, and it was, um, and I saw the Lord, he would just, he was, uh, we pretend this is, my, this is my closet. And he was bent over, and he's going like this. <laughs> I didn't see a face or anything. I just saw this person, and I said, Lord, what, what, what does this mean? He says, well, he says, I'm taking out anything that you don't need anymore. <laughs> because, you see, when we got born again, we came in, we, we left this world and came into his kingdom. And in his kingdom, it's the rules and the rules in his kingdom and... Uh, you know, like this, like we have uh, uh, rules uh, uh, in the way that the world is set up. Actually, God made all those. And, you know, like gravity. You know, what goes up must come down. Well, you know, in the, in God's kingdom, uh, there are spiritual, there's spiritual laws too. And as we receive everything, one of them is we receive everything by faith. So he said, nevertheless, whereunto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule and let us mind the same thing. 
So we are, as we read and study in his word, and as we come to know Jesus and to be Christ-like, yes, there are going to be very similarities. Uh, we are be, we're believing the same thing, and yet each one of us is a unique individual. Brethren, be followers together with me. Followers together with me. That means fellow in imitators. And then mark, and mark them which walk so you have it's, um, and pay attention to those that you have as an example for how to walk. For many walk of whom I have told you often, but now I tell you even weeping that they are, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ whose end is destruction. He's saying that even though there are some, there are some that have gone uh, that have gone off into into their own way, and they're not um, they uh, they are uh, they are not living for God. Uh, they're living outside of the victory and the rudiments of the cross of Christ. Because they, you, we have to stay focused on the cross. The cross is the uh, Jesus said, "I am today the same today as I was yesterday, and I'll be the same tomorrow." The cross is there for you. Okay. Praise you, Jesus. And we are to have our, our conversation is in heaven. From whence also we look for our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body. One day we'll have a glorious body. Praise you, Jesus. Well, I, uh, I didn't even... Uh, and get into what I'm going to turn. Um, see, in in uh, Second Peter one, um, it says that He given us all things, everything that we need for life and godliness. Praise the Lord. So. I want you to know that we are buried with him in baptism, wherein you are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God who has called him from the dead. So when Jesus went to the cross, he, uh, just as when he died, we died with him. And when we resurrected, we resurrected with him into the newness of life. It is not about the rapture, that's another thing. But when we we were dead in our sins and our trespasses. So, and all the blotting, the, uh, the handwriting of ordinances that was written against us, which was contrary to it, Jesus took it out of the way and he nailed it to his cross. And he spoiled principalities and powers. And he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them. In the, he made an open show of them when he went. Uh, when he went to uh, down to where the, was Satan <laughs> and all his and his followers were, and they were defeated at the cross, and by, by Jesus atoning for our sin, Jesus was the payment for all the sins of all of mankind from the beginning of time to the end of time. He made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. It's simp It's something like. Uh, it's something like when, uh, when um, uh, there's a bat when in a war, you know, the general, as he, <laughs> he would, when he marches through, he, he marches uh, by and in front of all of those that, that had been defeated and he's proclaiming the victory. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or drink or in fact of holy day or a new moon or the Sabbath all of which are a shadow of things to come, but the body of Christ. But the body is of Christ. So I want to say to you uh, today that the biggest thing, and we're going to be talking some more. 
we're going to keep on talking about this because I want you to be ready when Jesus comes, to have that awesome relationship with him. Because knowing Jesus is the, is the best thing that you can do for yourself. And so right now I want to pray with you and, uh, and just repeat after me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you to learn more of you, to know who I am in you and who you are in me. Lord, I, I, I have sinned and I, and I need to be saved. And I come to you to receive my salvation with the bloodshed of Jesus. For he went to the cross and he paid my price and then he was resurrected and he is seated on the right hand of God the Father. And one day he'll come back and I want to be ready, ready when he comes that my vessel will be filled with the oil of the, of the, of the word of God and your presence. And I thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Well, I just want to, uh, to encourage you to, uh, if you don't have a church and you need a church to go to, uh, there's a wonderful, Bible believing church in uh, Onset, Onset Foursquare Church. It's right on Onset Ave <laughs> and uh, in Onset. And we would love to have you there and uh, you come and visit us. And, um, but it's a place where you'll, you'll learn and you'll grow. It's a, it's a place where you'll be fed. And it's a place where you'll meet other Christians. And so and to be, a, to help you um, to walk the walk. Because we, we, need, we need to be taught, and it's, of course it's the Holy Spirit, but the Holy Spirit is speaking through uh, a pastor, a preacher, a teacher. So we have, uh, but we meet every Sunday at 10 o'clock, and Bible study is at 7 o'clock on Wednesday nights. And you, you are definitely welcome. And uh, so with that, I'm going to say goodbye, and I'll be looking forward to speaking with you in a few weeks. God bless you. The Lord be with you. 